Good day. Yung topic natin today ay number sequences, which is another type of a function. Let's define it. A number sequence is a function whose domain is either the set of all natural numbers, in which case we'll call it an infinite sequence. Pwede natin isipin na ang sequence is just a sequence of numbers, no? Na naka-order. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. So, in this example, yung sequence ko ay 314, followed by 15, followed by 926, followed by 5, and so on. And this is supposed to be a se an infinite sequence of numbers. Kumbaga, infinite number of terms. Terms yung tawag natin. But, meron siyang order. So, may first number sa sequence, second number sa sequence, third number sa sequence. Pwede natin siyang isipin na function na ang x-coordinate ay yung n na 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way to positive infinity. Tapos, yung y ay yung a sub n or parang f of x. Kasi yung n yung x natin, then yung f of x natin is yung a sub n. Pwede rin siyang a parenthesis n. Depende na lang sa convention which corresponds to the values in the sequence na nagko-correspond dun sa kung pang ilang term siya, which is given by n. If yung domain natin ay yung buong set of natural numbers, meaning you are proceeding from first term, second term, third term, fourth term, all the way to infinity, then we call this an infinite sequence. But if your sequence ends, like it's only a sequence of 10 numbers, then ang domain niya will be the set of the first n natural numbers. Yeah. For n equals 10, so first 10. So this was, would be what we call a finite sequence. Na hindi siya nag-go all the way to infinity. So for example, if my sequence na 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42, anim na numbers lang siya, then it is a finite sequence. Now let's explain what we mean when we say that a number sequence is explicitly defined. This means na parang binibigyan tayo ng formula para hanapin yung nth term ng isang sequence. So this would be similar dun sa nakakaugalian natin na function notation where f of x equals some expression of x. So here, in our first sequence, a sub n, meaning the nth term, is given by the expression n over n plus 1. And ulit yung n, siya yung kung pang ilang term siya sa sequence. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. So, given this explicit definition ng bawat term sa sequence natin, ang a sub 1 natin ay when n is replaced by 1. So, 1 over 1 plus 1, so it's 1 half. a sub 2 would be 2 over 2 plus 1, 2 thirds. a sub 3 would be 3 over 3 plus 1, 3 fourths. And a sub 10, Yung pang sampung term sa sequence would be 10 over 10 plus 1 or 10 over 11. Pwede rin natin, like replacing f with g of x, yung instead na a sub n, we could use another another letter. Kasi it's a different sequence. So b sub n, still a sequence, but I'm just using another letter to identify the sequence. So in this sequence, ang bawat term, b sub n, or the nth term, is defined by the expression negative 1 raised to n plus 1 times n squared over 3n minus 1. So, binibigay ko na, kumbaga, yung formula nung pang nth term nung sequence natin. So, when n equals 1, this would be negative 1 raised to 1 plus 1. So, positive 1. Times 1 squared over 3 minus 1. So, 1 half. When n equals 2, this will be 2 plus 1. So, magiging odd number siya. So, negative 1 raised to an odd number is negative 1. Or negative ng 4 over 6 minus 1 or 5, so negative 4 over 5. When n equals 3, this would be positive 9 over 8. When n equals 10, this would be 10 plus 1 or 11. Negative 1 raised to an odd number is negative 1 or negative 100 over 30 minus 1 or negative 100 over 29. So that is what we mean when we say that a function is explicitly defined. Parang binibigay na sa atin yung formula nung pang n na term ng sequence. Kumbaga, if you want the 20th term, you just plug in 20 dun sa n, sa expression. Ano yung alternative? Then, we could have a recursively defined sequence. So, a recursively defined sequence, this is a number sequence, where the first term is stated together with a rule for obtaining the next term from the previous. So, ang convention natin, 
you want to get to the nth term, yung previous term ay a sub n minus 1. So what do I mean by that? Let's say that I have this function that is recursively defined. So ano ulit yung kailangan? Kailangan yung first term and a rule for obtaining the next term. So the first term is 1. So a sub 1 is 1. That's already given in the recursive definition. So dito sa bubuoin nating function, andun na siya. And the function is defined as 7 minus 2 times the previous term. Again, the next term is equal to 7 minus twice the previous term. So to get to the next term, it's 7 minus 2 times 1. So 7 minus 2, 5. To get to the next term, it's 7 minus 2 times 5, the negative 3. The fourth term is 7 minus 2 times negative 3, so 7 plus 6, 13. And the fifth term is 7 minus 2 times 13, negative 19. So you see, as you can see, to get to the next term, you have to know kung ano yung previous term natin. Na hindi naman kailangan na isang term lang yung titignan natin pabalik. We have this uh, famous sequence and de-define natin siya like this. The first two terms, b1 and b2, are both equal to 1. And to get to the next term, we will take the sum of the previous term and yung previous previous term, yung parang two terms before. So in this case, to get to the third term, we need to add the second term with the first term. So ang first two terms natin ay 1, ang third term natin ay yung previous plus yung two terms before, so 1 plus 1, that will be equal to 2. The fourth term is 2 plus 1, or 3, and the fifth term will be 3 plus 2, or 5. So, kung familiar kayo dito, this would be the Fibonacci sequence. So, let's practice. Let's take a look at this sequence of numbers, and let's try to find both the recursive and the explicit definition. So, what I would want to do is pause muna yung video, get your notebook, and try to find both the recursive and the explicit definition. So, pause. Okay, I'm going to trust na pinos na siya at magpo-proceed na tayo. Let's compare yung sagot ninyo dun sa sagot ko. Now, if you look at the sequence, anong ginagawa natin? 3, papuntang 5, papuntang 7, papuntang 9. We're just adding 2 to the previous term. So, we could write our recursive definition as to get to the next term, we take the previous term and add 2. Is this correct? Pareho ba tayo ng sagot? Well, dapat mali ito kasi kulang ito. Ang requirement natin sa recursive definition, bibigay din natin yung first term. So, to complete the definition, it has to be a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus 2, and the first term is equal to 3. Now, the explicit definition, yung hindi natin titignan kung ano yung previous term. Parang dapat in terms of n lang. This would be equal to, or the nth term would be equal to 2n plus 1. So, let's check. When n equals 1, that's 2 plus 1. When n equals 2, that is 4 plus 1, 5. When n equals 3, that's 6 plus 1, 7, and so on. So I hope nakuha nyo din yung same na explicit definition natin. Now later, we'll discuss yung formula or yung process to compute for the actual explicit definition. But for now, kinakapalang natin dito sa sequence natin. And hopefully, we got the same answer. Kung hindi nyo pa alam kung paano gawin yung actual na process. Let's continue looking at other sequences. So again, this would be the sequence na alternate lang from 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, and so on. So I'm going to pause this here and wait for you to provide your own recursive and explicit definitions of this function. Okay, let's compare your answers with my answers. Kung titignan ko yung function, ang ginagawa ko lang to move from 1 to negative 1 ay... Nagmumultiply ako ng negative 1 sa previous. So, I could write it na, I'm using a different notation here. Instead of a sub n, I'm using yung parang function talaga, naka parenthesis. Now, this is fine. This is correct. Some older books would use this. But maybe for our, the rest of our discussion, I'll stick with a uh, subscript notation. So, a sub n, or the nth term, is equal to negative of the previous term. So, ninegate lang natin kung ano yung previous term. And we don't forget to include that the first term is positive 1. Next, explicit definition. The nth term is just negative 1 raised to n minus 1. So let's check. If n equals 1, then this would be negative 1 raised to 0. That's positive 1. If n equals 2, then this would be negative 1 raised to the first power or negative 1 and so on. So tama naman yung explicit definition natin. 
uh, for some of you, baka gumawa kayo ng piecewise na definition. I guess okay lang yun. But this is better kasi isang ano lang siya. Isang expression lang siya. Look at another example. Let's take a look at our next number sequence. And if this is familiar, ito yung ito natin kanina. In example natin kanina, this is the famous Fibonacci sequence named after Leonardo Pisano Bigolo, who is also known as Fibonacci. He's an Italian. And he lived from 1175 to 1250. Take note lang natin yung, yung date of death niya. It's 1250. And as you know, ito yung sequence na kukunin mo yung first two terms, i-add mo sila, then to get to the next term, you add the previous two terms. So we've seen the recursive definition kanina. <laughs> Pause it a bit kung maalala nyo pa without rewinding. And let's see if you can come up with your own explicit definition for this function. So pause it and let's compare our results. So I'm just changing the notation kasi may special name siya. It's the Fibonacci sequence. So I'm using capital F but we've already defined this earlier. But this would be uh, the nth term is equal to the previous term plus the two terms ahead na two terms behind na term natin. So two terms back. Where the first two terms are both equal to 1. Now I will be surprised if you are able to find an explicit definition for this number sequence kasi ang explicit expression niya meron meron pero it's a bit complicated and the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence is actually equal to 1 over square root of 5 multiplied to the difference between 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 raised to n minus 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 raised to n. And yung surprising dito is that even with the presence of all these square roots of 5 na nire-raise pa natin to a power, lahat ng makukuha nating result dito sa expression na to ay positive integers. Kasi positive integers yung sa Fibonacci sequence. Now, let's take a look at a similar sequence. And this is called the Luca sequence, named after François Edouard Anatole Luca, na pinanganak ng 1842, almost 600 years after namatay si Fibonacci. Tingnan natin yung sequence niya. 2, 1, 3. Paano na yung 3? Hmm, mukhang inad lang in 2 and 1. 4, 3 and 1. 7, 4 and 3. So this is exactly the Fibonacci rule. Na pinalitan lang na ni Luca yung first term from 1 ginawa niyang 2. At ginawa niya yun 600 years after namatay si Fibonacci. And for that, he has the privilege of having his own sequence named after him. Only 600 years para palitan yung first term. So, the recursive definition, pause natin, try nyong hanapan. Okay, let's continue to see kung pareho tayo ng recursive definitions. It would be the same definition as the Fibonacci sequence, where the nth term is equal to the sum of the previous two terms. Except that, we'll now specify a different first term, 2. Instead na pareho silang 1. May pinakaiba kaya si explicit definition. Actually, surprisingly, mas malini siya tignan. Kung i-compare natin dun sa explicit definition ng Fibonacci sequence, mapakikita natin na mawawala na yung 1 over square root of 5. Tapos yung minus magiging plus. Pero yung 1 plus at yung 1 minus square root of 5 all over 2, hindi siya mawawala. Siya yung parang invariant dun sa sequences of these types. So actually, hindi mo na pwedeng gawin na, ah, papalitan ko yung 2, gagawin kong 3. Papa, tatawagin ko siyang chrosologo sequence. We're way past that, no? Basta yung sequences na ina-add natin yung previous two terms, parang nagpo-follow ng Fibonacci rule, pero papalitan natin yung first two terms, we refer to that as the generalized Fibonacci sequence or the Gibonacci sequence for short. Hindi yung joke yung talaga yung tawag sa kanya. Tapos medyo interesting yung math ideas na pwede natin ma-pick up doon, pero medyo beyond na our scope for this lesson. So hindi natin itatouch. I have another number sequence for us na pag-iisipan. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29. Yeah, so this is the prime number sequence. And the challenge here is to find a recursive and an explicit definition for the prime number sequence. So, pause it. We'll give you like, siguro, two minutes lang to find uh, either a recursive or an explicit definition for this. So, may nahanap ba kayo kahit nag-search kayo sa internet? Dapat wala. Kasi as of now, we don't have a rule for defining the prime number sequence. We have no idea how to find 
the next prime number. Alam natin paano i-test kung prime number ang isang number pag nakita natin siya. And right now, uh, meron alam na may, meron tayong largest prime number that we know. Pero na prove na rin natin before that the sequence of prime numbers is an infinite sequence. There is no such thing as the largest prime number. And we don't know how to find the next prime number. And we don't even know if between the largest prime number that we know and 2, nahanap na natin lahat ng prime numbers. So there are projects in the internet where, where they search for a certain type of prime. So you have twin primes, you have the Mersenne primes. And these are just prime numbers that follow a specific rule na parang 2 to the n minus 1 tsaka 2 to the n plus 1 tapos hanapin nila yung n. But there are primes na hindi nagpa-follow nung ganung rule and we don't have a way to look for them. But in general, there's no known rule for defining the prime number sequence. And we don't even know if such a rule exists as hindi pa lang natin nahanap or wala talagang rule at random yung distribution ng prime numbers along the number line. Okay, this is a weird sequence. So, 1, 11, 21, and so on. Tignan nyo lang siya. And I'll give you its name. This is called the look and say sequence. And I won't even ask for you to find either the explicit or recursive rules for this. I'll just want you to find the next two terms of this sequence. I'll pause it. I guess yung clue is the name. It's called the look and say sequence. Okay, I hope pinag-isipan lang natin sa nang konte at tinray natin sagutan ito yung clue look and say sequence look at it and say ko ano yung nakikita mo so first term nakita kong isang one isang one in second term i see two ones two one so you take a look and you mention what you're looking at looking at the third term it's isang two isang one one two one one to get to the fourth term one 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 two two one Okay, so that is the look and say sequence. Wala talaga tayong mathematical rule na magagawa for that. And to find the next two terms, tignan natin, we have 3, 1, 1, 3, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 2, and 2, 1. Yung blank na term, I leave that to you na hanapin based dun sa results natin na previews. So hindi lahat ng sequences na may numbers, kailangan may formula sila. And here's just an example of a sequence na may rule, pero good luck makahanap ng explicit or recursive man lang na definition. Although technically, ang definition niya recursive. You have to look at the previous term and say it. That's it muna for number sequences. Yung next video la lesson natin, we'll look at specific types of number sequences. And thank you very much, and I'll see you sa next video natin.